Welcome to another episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Carrie Vanda. How are you? I'm hanging in there, Bill. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. So thank you so much for coming on my show. Sure. A lot of people out there might might uh, recognize these pictures from a book from uh, Ken Croak. Nah. So he was an undercover FBI agent who ended up infiltrating the Pagans MC on Long Island and putting your father in prison. And you were there when Ken Croak was around and you noticed some things about him. We're gonna get into it. First, do you wanna introduce yourself to the people and tell them where you're from and, and all that good stuff? Sure, my name is Kerry. Um, I'm from Suffolk County, Long Island. I am the father of Hogman who is uh, in the book from chapter one to chapter 51. So if you read the book, and I'm sure you've heard Hogman's name. I am his daughter. My dad has been around the pagans and been a pagan since I'm born. So it's just his lifestyle. My uncle was the vice president. When Ken Croak first got introduced to your dad, do you remember this time? Or were you around that time? Yeah, I had actually just... This all happened all at the same time. My kids were legally kidnapped from the state of Vermont. And I winded up going back to New York um ken was already in the picture when i got back to new york from vermont um but i remember visiting my dad and um i seen him come in the door and i just i right off the gate you could i could smell it you could smell the swine <laughs> you know and um my dad knew too my dad knew but he he was going through the death of my mother they were together for 30 years and she overdosed so um, he oh, tried to sorry, commit suicide twice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my dad wasn't really mentally all there. You know, he was definitely in another place, definitely still grieving and mourning. Um, he tried to commit suicide twice. Once was he drove his Harley with uh, whiskey in one hand and it was raining out and uh, he just wanted to get into an accident. I'm not sure what stopped him. And then one other time after that, he held the shotgun to his chin and was going to pull the trigger. But one of my uncles, I'm not sure if it was Tommy or Jason, took the bullets out of the gun like five minutes before he decided to do that. They were like on 12 hour shifts watching my dad, making sure he didn't do anything stupid. Wow. So do you remember the first time that Ken Crow ever introduced a legal activity around your father or your uncle? Um, well, the time that I went to visit my dad was what I was really talking about when he came in. And, um, you know, I, it, it's a norm for me to see my dad pull out some Coke, some crystal meth. Like, he does it, and I'm just like, ugh, whatever, you know? And I'm sitting at the table, and I, you know, we were like smoking weed and stuff like that at the time. So I didn't indulge in anything else. I don't, I'm not, I'm not big into drugs, but um, I saw Ken sniff crystal meth. And in the book, he says it was cocaine and that he, I guess they have some tactic where they they pretend to do it or something and that he didn't pretend to do shit. He 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 sniffed that crystal meth and I seen him do it. So um he left that part out in the book, but he left a lot of things out, you know. Yeah, you said he was having sex with a bunch of different women. He was married. Yeah, I was at my cousin I was at my cousin's house and um by the train station in Ronkonkoma, Long Island and we're chilling in her house. She's a she's like a really good cook, so we were all there to eat and stuff like that. And you know, her her uh, boyfriend was also a part of the pagan, so it was like a you know a get together, you know. And um, Ken went in the bathroom with two women and came out about twenty minutes later, and we heard the commotion. I mean, it wasn't like it was like I said, it wasn't it was the norm for us for that kind of behavior to happen, you know, but. In the book, he portrays himself to be this like ATF agent, cop undercover by the book. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. When this the the dead body situation came came about, you want to talk about that and how that all came about? Yeah, well, the the exact same time that I seen Ken sniff the crystal meth and then he winded up leaving. They had the conversation, they did what they did, and he had to leave. So he winded up leaving and I noticed his, the first thing I noticed on him was the, 
clean nails. I mean, even if you're not a one percenter and you work on bikes and you're just a part of an MC, your nails are going to be permanently embedded with mechanic oil. Um, it doesn't, you can clean it with acid. It ain't coming off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he just was too like clean cut and everything. So when he left, Look I, at this guy. Yeah. Look yeah. At yeah. Come on. So like, um, I looked at my dad and I said, dad, I, I think he's a cop. Like I, I, I distinctly remember that. And he looks at me and he goes, I know. And he says, we're putting him to the test. Later so, on, I found you, out. You said what. this when he got up and walked away, right? You didn't yes, say and I should have. Ken. I should have. And you know, you know how like you get into a fight or an argument and later on you're like, I should have said this. I should have did that. It was one of those moments for me. It was like, damn, just even, even now when my dad passed away, I even still think, what if I was at that table? And what if I said, motherfucker, you're a cop. I would have blew his whole cover right there. I mean, what was he going to say? No, I'm not. You know what I mean? So like I should have, would have, could have, but I didn't. And I think it was because I didn't want to cause a, a uproar right then and there between my dad and this big, strong, burly man who could probably you know, mash my father into potatoes. You know, my father was another thing. Boy. Let's talk about the assault that Ken Croak did on some guy, and and he got a nickname for it. Yeah, Slam. So, uh, in the book, he describes that as like he didn't want to do it like he was hesitant it was, it was a big thing for him and he almost didn't do it you know but he had to because the club was right there and if he didn't you know what i'm saying it wasn't like that he fucking broke that guy's neck slammed him on the fucking ground and broke his neck i don't know what happened to the guy after that um but that's how he got his name assaulting that man like he he didn't have an issue doing it so that night you told it was him. almost like he was sowing his oath yeah it was like what you know it was like almost like him sowing yeah. his oats like he had the chance to, to to relive his midlife crisis type shit you know yeah through the motorcycle club and and facilitated by the atf right Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, they would be around the corner, um, the TikTok content. So uh, someone actually hit me up and explained how he felt at this big thing that they had. Um, not a powwow. They don't call it a powwow. They they call it something church, else. It's right? like some kind of get together. They, they no, other, it wasn't so much church. It was like church. on Sundays they have yeah clubs. when they have. Yeah, when they have a meeting, they call it church. But this was more like the old the old ladies can come, the girls can come. You know, it's like a big, big thing, right? Um, yeah. The compound. That's what it was called, the compound. So this guy on TikTok is explaining to me that he felt something was off at the compound. And he saw the feds there. Now, for this guy to tell me that from my TikTok content, all the way from the situation that actually happened at the compound is like, it kind of blew my mind because this man, this pagan was there and described to me recently that he felt it was some off shit and he knew the feds were there. So the feds, they, they followed Ken everywhere he went. They were accessible anywhere. So let's talk about the dead body situation. <laughs> the night that you told your father, I think he's a cop. What did your father tell you? And what, what, what happened after that? So he said, I know. He said, you know, we're putting him to the test. He explained some things about his baby brother that was ignorant to the situation, but we'll get into that. Um, so he tells me that they're going to have him bury a fake dead body. I'm like a fake dead body. Knowing my dad, I'm like, I wonder if he's just telling me that so that I don't freak out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. A fake dead body, whatever. So they do, they take him upstate and, um, it's in the news article. So they took him upstate, um, and they had him bury a whole big giant bag full of like boots and old meat, 
um, possibly some animal parts, you know, um, it smelled pretty rotten from what my dad told me. Um, and they had Ken bury it. And in the book, he was explaining how he had a hard time doing that. He didn't know, you know, if the ATF was going to back him up on that, but you know, whatever. So he winded up burying the dead body. And then, so yeah, they buried it and it was, <laughs> it was nothing but fucking boots and meat and whatever and, and then later but they were on, excited because they thought we got them we got them yes yes they were very excited for that they couldn't wait to dig up that body and have a murder charge for everyone um but that's not what happened gearing up and they got all their you know digging material and everybody you know um and they go up there and they um they unbury <laughs> the bag full of bullshit. 